science or Frankenstein food? How safe is the new ingredient in your diet? I wouldn't eat it, but like everyone else, I don't have a choice. Tonight, the risks from genetically modified food. What happens when it's inside our bodies? And are we all part of a huge scientific experiment? It's very unfair to use our fellow citizens as uh, guinea pigs. You are committing an offence of criminal damage. I'm asking you uh, politely to desist, please. In a field in Oxfordshire, the eco-warriors go into battle. Their targets are genetically modified crops. Green activists have declared war on genetic science and threatened to destroy hundreds of sites this summer. All the opinion polls show the public, too, is wary of the new technology. Concerns even stretch to the royals. Prince Charles says he wouldn't serve the new food to his family or friends. There are several anxieties that people have. If we think about what's happened over the past decade with all the various food scandals, you know, the public have lost confidence and trust in our regulatory system. Um, in the past, we've been given false reassurances about food safety. And in the case of BSE, that had disastrous consequences. So I think it's not surprising that people are very wary and very sceptical. Why are being committed by the companies planting these crops? They're unsafe and unhealthy. The companies concerned are fighting back. They're taking legal action against the protesters and spending huge amounts of money trying to persuade the rest of us their products are safe. But whether they succeed or not, those products are now here and almost impossible to avoid. Genetically engineered foods have already been on the shelves. They've been there for about a year. We're already eating it, and we're eating it in large quantities. It's in some like 60% of processed foods, and the public are unaware because it's unlabeled. So we're, when we're talking about products like chocolate, we're talking about bread, we're talking about cakes, we're talking about baby food. It's in there, and we don't know we're eating it because it's not labeled at the moment. Scientists have been altering the food we eat for generations. Supporters of genetically modified or GM foods say we have nothing to fear from the new technology. We've been messing with nature, as some people would put it, ever since agriculture started. We've been producing improved strains of cattle, pigs, sheep, wheat, in order to make them more nourishing or easy to grow under different conditions. But that type of breeding might have, might have taken many, many generations or even hundreds of years to improve the quality of the food material. Well, this is what supporters always say. But if you look at how we've produced food over hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, we've crossed two, two varieties together, for instance, a big tomato and a red tomato, and crossbred them to produce a big red tomato, if you like. But with genetic engineering, you can take genetic material from one species, like a fish, and put it in a totally different species, like a tomato. So you are actually producing new life forms and a wholly, totally new different type of food. For the food industry, the potential of the new science is massive. They can produce foods now like vegetables and fruits which don't rot, which stay fresher for longer. You know, cows that produce more milk. There's lots of benefits for the food industry, but we really question whether or not it's going to be benefits for the consumer and society as a whole. Among the first food ingredients to be genetically altered were maize and soya. The giant US chemical company Monsanto created a new type of soya bean designed to be resistant to one of its weed killers. The American farmers who bought it found they could spray their fields with herbicides without having to worry about damaging their crops. Today, around a third of soya from the US is genetically altered. And when it gets to the factory, it's mixed together with ordinary soya so you'll never know which is which. If we don't segregate soya at source, what's going to happen is that once it's in the food chain, it's going to become virtually invisible. That's going to make choice almost impossible. It's going to make accurate labelling very, very difficult. If something goes wrong, how are we going to recall it if we can't even find it? 
consumer groups want all the products containing GM ingredients labelled. At the moment, stores don't have to give clear information. But the Iceland chain tells shoppers which items are free from the products. Its chairman has banned their use in all the store's own brand goods. He's described GM ingredients as Frankenstein food. The Frankenstein label is a very unfortunate one. It conveys no information of any use at all and simply provides a scare tactic which frightens people. I think people are genuinely concerned and curious about the rate of change of this scientific advance. It's only five or six years since the cheese appeared. It's only a couple of years since the tomato paste. We now have soya well on its way and there's a whole host of other products, for example, virus and blight resistant potatoes are well down the path of being a commercial product and I think people are just startled at the rate at which these new products are appearing using a technology which hasn't been properly explained to them. But it's that pace of change that's worrying other scientists as well. They say GM food is being rushed onto the market and into our diets without adequate safety tests and that we're part of one huge experiment. We're assured that, that this is absolutely safe we can eat it all the time, we must eat it all the time. There is no conceivable harm which can come to us. But as a scientist, uh, looking at it and actively working on the field, uh, I find that uh, it's very, very unfair to use uh, our fellow citizens as uh, guinea pigs. We have to find the guinea pigs in the laboratory. Professor Pushtai's lab is at Scotland's Rowett Institute, one of the leading food research centres in Europe. Scientists here are trying to find out whether long-term consumption of GM foods may affect health. Their test, funded by the Scottish office, is believed to be the only one of its kind. Rats have been fed two different kinds of genetically modified potato, which are not on sale and have never been eaten by humans. The rats ate them for more than a hundred days, the human equivalent of ten years. The immune system takes about ten days to get in top gear. So if we do a short-term trial, uh, we wouldn't have seen the end result. Animals fed on one kind of research potato remained perfectly healthy, but rats given the other set did show ill effects. The professor is so concerned about the implications of his discovery, he's decided to publicise his findings early. Tonight, he reveals them for the first time. The effect was a slight growth retardation and an effect on the immune system. One of the, the genetically modified potatoes, after 110 days, made the rats less responsive to immune effects. Our immune system helps protect us from infectious disease. When it's weakened, we're more vulnerable to illness. So if genetically altered foods can affect rats in this way, could they possibly have long-term effects on humans too? If I had the, 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 uh, the choice, I would certainly not eat it till I see at least comparable experimental evidence which we are producing for are genetically modified potatoes. I actually believe that this technology can be made to work for us. And if, if the genetically modified food will be shown to be safe, then uh, we have really done a great service to uh, all our fellow citizens. And I very strongly believe in this. And that's one of the main reasons why I th demand to tighten up the rules tighten up the standards. Monsanto have carried out 20 years of tests on their genetically modified soya and maize. But they wouldn't tell us if they've carried out similar long-term feeding studies on animals. The company has embarked on a massive public relations campaign, including full-page adverts in national newspapers and a free public information hotline. But they've declined to appear in this program because they claim it will be unfair to them. The hotline, though, is there to give information and reassurance to the public, so we decided to call it too. On Centre Information Line, how can I help there? And I'm hoping you might be able to tell me what long-term studies have you carried out on feeding genetically modified soya to mammals? If you're calling as a journalist, I need to refer you to Alex Wolfhole, who's in our present PR department. 
Right, so I, I can't get, as a consumer, um, uh, as well as a journalist, I can't get that information from your information line. As a journalist, you do need to deal with Alex with any inquiry you, you wish to um, present. Right, so, so the Mon just to get this absolutely clear, the Monsanto information line cannot answer that question. I, I need to refer you to Alex, and as I said, I've given you his phone number, and he should hopefully be able to answer any question you have. Monsanto have called for a public debate on the safety issues surrounding genetically modified food. But when we finally reached their official spokesman, Dan Varakis, two hours later, he had no wish to discuss those issues with us. What long-term studies have Monsanto carried out on feeding genetically modified soya to mammals? We're happy to participate in any discussion about biotechnology that is fair and presents all sides of the story. I've said all that I can say here. There isn't anything else I can add to this conversation, so thanks, but I really must be going. Responsibility for the safety of GM foods rests with a government advisory committee. It allowed Monsanto to introduce its products after studying the company's own scientific research. The committee was satisfied they presented no health concerns. Risk assessment is a very, very difficult concept to understand and it's a complete and utter fallacy to say there's zero risk associated with anything. You could choke and you could therefore say there's a risk in consuming any food. Obviously we have to eat. What we are very, very concerned about is establishing that those foods are, have the minimal possible risk. The committee's been criticised for relying on research from the biotech companies themselves. Government studies on the effects of eating the products won't be published until 2001. People are saying we need to know what the long-term effects will be of genetically modified foods in the food chain. And so we're going to try and set up some procedures to actually monitor over many years. So does that mean that we are the experiment? We are the guinea pigs? No, I don't think it does. It, it means that we are collecting data in terms of consumption. I think perhaps this is an issue related to consumer choice. We've already been consuming genetically modified soya for almost a year now without being aware of it. It's not labelled. We haven't got a choice. And the advisory system, the advisory committee is only now thinking about how it could be monitored. Shouldn't that have been thought of somewhat earlier? And isn't that a case of, you know, shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted? Thank you for taking part in our genetic experiment. Yes! Campaigners against GM foods have been accused of scare tactics frightening consumers with non-existent risks. But the critics say the new technology is unpredictable, and if it goes wrong, the health effects could be 